Hello everybody, my name is Hernan Parra. I am the master blender of Dictador Rums. Today we are gonna go through all of our range of products from our 12 years old, finally ending with our jeans. The idea here is that you have extra material. We are going to start first with our 12 years old rum. Our production system basically has three important stages where the rum has its flavor profile. First of all, you have to understand that Dictador rums only use virgin sugar cane use instead of molasses. This will give us a much clearer and clean product to do our first stage of fermentation. Secondly, our fermentation is made uh, based on our own family of yeasts that it's been with us for over 60 years that we keep in our laboratory and that we uh, enhance or reopen every time we need it to do our fermentation process. Then finally, when we do our fermentation process with our own yeast, after doing the process with our own sugarcane uh, use, we do the distillation. Distillation is the third and um, important part for our profile product. So the distillation process comes in two ways. We do the column and we do the pot. The column basically is one of the most modern and efficient way of making rum, of making alcohol basically. And this alcohol will come up to 96% of, uh, of, uh, of ABV and this alcohol is a light profile. In other, on the other hand, we have the pot which we can come up to 80% of alcohol, 77% of alcohol. And this alcohol is gonna be really heavy with a lot of congeners, a lot of, uh, of esters, and basically a huge uh, flavor profile. Then, with our experience, we understood that having only pot alcohol as a rum make it really, really heavy with a very nice uh, taste uh, profile, with, but with a very, uh, big problem that makes a huge hangover next day. So we need to find a balance in having a nice uh, tasting profile, but also a nice uh, waking up for people next day. So what we decide to do is to make a combination of these two alcohols, the light one, which is a very simple alcohol, and the heavy one. And we do 70% of the light alcohol, 30% of the, of, the, of the very heavy ones, to get to a medium body uh, rum. This is because we want to have a rum that is suitable for almost every palate. People that can taste and can afford to taste our rums, they will find it very easy to drink, very uh, uh, lovely to enjoy, very easy to drink, as we are going to do right now. So this, this, this alcohol that is a medium body rum will be sitting then in our oak barrels. The idea of, of making H rums is it's to get away these, these, these higher alcohols, these higher content of alcohols, and the only way of doing it is naturally. There's a lot of uh, talking about uh, people that are doing, uh, in a way, and fake rums and trying to make uh, faster aging, but at the end of the day, these kind of things is impossible to achieve a good quality rum and I will tell you why. The first thing is because the, 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 the nature of aging, the nature of putting a rum into a barrel, it's allowing this rum to breathe, to get oxygen. And this is the only way, by time, to get it cured, to get it, as in Spanish they say, crianza, uh, breed. Why? Because the rum needs the time to expel or or his impurity and keep the best of, of, its, of itself, keep the, the heart of the beautiful rum. And the only way to know it is when you, you serve a glass of any, of any alcohol, especially the aged ones, and you get the sensation that there's no alcohol inside, that it's very smooth. That's the only way that you can certify that any alcohol has been really aged on time. Otherwise, you'll find a very heavy smell of alcohol into your nose or a very strong alcohol flavor in your mouth. That means it's a young alcohol. You can add sugar, you can add additives, you can add colorants, you can add whatever you want and you won't be able to get away of this heavy alcohol um, initial taste at smell and at, at the mouth. So please believe me, the only way to achieve a smooth, very balanced uh, spirit in this case, rum from sugarcane, 
is through time aged in the barrels. So now guys, we will open our first bottle. We will open our 12 years old. I will, I will give you some tips on how to do the tasting of the rum. Normally all of our bottles has a little uh, slip here. So you can open it easily. And uh, we can start serving immediately. All of our bottles comes with a natural cork. Basically all the information of the rum is in the back of the bottle and in the front of the bottle. We will have to see a few things here. The first thing that we do on any tasting note is to see the glass with the spirit inside. One of the most important things for us is that not, not adding any additive, any colorant. If you see the color of our 12 years old, it's very light. Many people ask me, why don't you put the caramel so it looks really aged? Or, or age for longer, and I said, I, I, I find it absolutely ridiculous to add any additive after 12 years. This is how it comes out from the, from the cask, so that's the way we will just bottle it. Then we have the, the second thing that you can see in a glass before tasting, it's how fudge is the product, how thick it's itself. Why thick? Normally, alcohol is less dense than water, but after so many years into a, a cask, you will start to see a product gets body, gets a lot of, uh, of uh, material inside that gives it the thickness that we are expecting. So it's gonna roll slower than water or even the just fermented alcohol or just distilled alcohol. That characteristic is very important to check. There's also a possibility that you can get thickness from sugar. But then you will be able to notice if it's thickened by sugar, by the taste. Because uh, unfortunately, too much sugar will be get sweet product. Rums naturally cannot be sweet. Because we have, yes, people say, but it's from sugar cane. Yeah, it's from sugar cane, but from sugar cane, we are only obtaining the alcohol. The yeast eats the sugar and convert this sugar into alcohol. Then this alcohol will be distilled. Distillation is the separation of the alcohol from the rest of the liquid. And if I go to the, to the, to the column, absolutely almost everything will get out. So the alcohol, it's neutral. There's no taste of sweetness in it. And on the other hand, for the pot, this heavy alcohol, which is uh, the heaviness of the alcohol comes from the yeast from the process of the conversion of the, of the sugar into alcohol, the yeast will bring these heavy alcohols into the process of, 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 of uh, the fermentation. And then the distillation, when we separate, we will have to get sure that we get off the methanol from this process, but we will keep a lot of the basic heavy alcohols into it so we can have a much better uh, tasting profile or, or, or flavor profile. Knowing these two things, then you will know that if the thickness of the rum comes and the taste is not sweet, then the thickness comes from the oak barrel, not from sugar. It's very simple. Tastes too sweet, it means it's, it's, it's added some sweetener. If it's thick and no sweet, the thickness comes from the aging, from the time, from the process of aging during years. So now, you have seen the two first things, as, as I told you, the first thing is the color. We don't have that very deep, dark color that so many other rums can you find in the market. Because we just, what it comes out from the barrel will come to our, to our bottle and then to our glass. And the second one is the thickness of the product. So this is the first step of any, any tasting, is the visual tasting. The second one is going to be the nose. From here, we will get two important things. The first thing is when you, uh, when you approach the, the glass to your nose, the first thing you have to feel, if it's a lot of alcohol, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a young alcohol. It's not been aged enough to be smooth in the nose. But if you can keep your nose into the glass without having any sneezing or, or having to take away your face from the glass, it means you start with a very good first step in approaching the glass, having uh, knowing that this kind of uh, alcohol rafaga, I don't know how to express it, that it comes into your nose. If it's quiet, then it's good. 
Secondly, then you will have the time and you will have the possibility to smell the rest of the, of the aromas that comes out from the glass. One of the first things you must understand is that the smells that you get from the glass are just that your mind will make a comparison to other smells you know and then you can start making or basically doing a tasting note. So when you, when you, when you arrive to this, you have to use your, your, your scent memories. For example, the first thing that comes to my mind here is a dark chocolate. I also get uh, coffee. A lot of dry seeds. Dryness is very important in the spirits. For me, the alcohols that are not dry, that are sweet, they must have another influence. That doesn't make them bad, but they should state in the bottle that they have added any other uh, additament different from the just the alcohol aged. Uh, this is amazingly nice. You can find here also some caramel in the back, a lot of oak, a bit of baking soda. Touch of fruitness, like a bit of bananas, a bit of uh, um, pineapple. And finally, so these two steps, first one, feeling that, that the alcohol is not the major in the product, and then being able to notice some of the notes, tasting notes, and I want this a part of the tasting very, is very unique, it's very personal. Every person that put the glass in the nose has a different sense, uh, different from me and different from the person next to you. So sometimes you have to understand that what I am saying with the tasting note is what I feel for my personal uh, point of view. But you can find different flavors, you can disagree on some of the, of the, of the aromas you can feel on it, but this is all about the world. The world is different, people is different, people can feel different uh, things. The important thing is that the basics, which means the quality, the smoothness, it's easy to feel for everybody. And that's where the quality is, smoothness. Then the aromas, you can feel, some, some of people can feel it drier than other ones, some people can find it a little bit more choc dark chocolate than other ones. But the, the universe is that, it's, it's, it's diversity and it's, uh, it's, it's how every, each of one preserve, um, perceives every, every product. Then from here, the last step of the tasting, and I, and I always say the most important one in the whole uh, uh, process, because we do this only once. The, the next time we open a bottle, we don't do the first two, we just jump to the last one, which is tasting and, uh, or drinking. Uh, for this step, there's two, also two very important things to, to, to have in account. The first one is that when you put it in your mouth, the first sip, this first sip is very important because here you will feel if it's full of alcohol, if it's going to somebody that's going to burn you down. But it's important that a, a spirit with 40% alcohol has its own character. Character is important. The thing is that alcohol flavor is not a character. For me, it's a weakness of lack of aging. In this case, the second step of, of the tasting, it's having to notice the balance between the nose and the mouth. Here, it's where you can notice if some aromas has been added or not. Why? Because normally, when people add additives to any product, the additives will stay very short in the product and will be only felt by the nose. And I want to explain to you that in our system of uh, tasting, 85% of what we perceive is through the nose and 15% is out through our mouth. So if we have a great feeling of any aroma and it's not present in the taste, means that something is not properly uh, done in the aging. 
in some of the products, they call it the roundness of the product. Roundness means that it, it's a balance between the nose and the mouth and the tongue. In this case, I find it absolutely uh, round. But again, doing this in the camera, tasting in front of you guys without a, you having a glass with me, it's, 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 it's weird. <laughs> but you will have to do this, what I'm saying, to understand how the quality of product can be tasted only by tasting. It's not possible to do it in another way. Of course, you can do uh, laboratory tests that cost a lot of money, but just in this way, you will understand that the product has a quality. So, just to finish the part of the tasting, on the second sip, you will start to feel all the, all the flavors that I start to remind from the, from the nose and getting a new ones. I get a little bit of tobacco, that's a new taste. I take a, new, a little bit of leather, a lot of citrusy, burst of citrus in the, in the aftertaste, a long, very long uh, aftertaste, which is very important in, in the aged products. When you have a very light product that it's made with just uh, aromas, when you put it in your mouth, you go through and then it's, it's, it's gone. In this case, you still feel the flavor after a few seconds, after 30 seconds, you can still pass your mouth and you can feel a little bit of the, of the taste that you have from the beginning. Here, I get the dark chocolate, I get the oak, I get the, the caramel and a little bit of vanilla. Uh, I will go back to the citrusy, with the, the, this burst of, of citrusy. The baking soda is also present then. But the most, what I feel is the dry seeds on our 12 years old. And not saying more, I find this is a very dry uh, rum, very elegant product, complex but simple, smooth, so can be easily drink uh, on its glass by its own, on the rocks or many other ways of serving. So we finish here with our 12 years old, we will jump in our, on, onto our 20 year old, which basically has the same uh, production process. The aging, which I didn't uh, firmly talk in the, in the first stage, is just like a whole, because the process of aging is, is very unique in our, in our uh, company. Normally, if I state that we have a 20-year-old single cask rum, it would be difficult to be, for me to be able to confirm it. Why? Let's say here in camera, we put a barrel here, we fill it with a rum, fresh rum, and we do this same uh, shooting in 20 years, and we open the barrel, the barrel will be empty. Unfortunately, in our business, we have a, a, an issue with the evaporation. Evaporation, uh, correctly called by, by, by the Scottish, like a share of the angels, it's, a, it's an industry problem. So our aging process, uh, knowing about the, the share, angel share and the losing of the, of the product every year, we noticed many years ago, actually it was noticed by my grandfather, that if the barrel was completely full of, of, of uh, spirit, of rum, the evaporation range will be, or the, the, the rate will be very low, will be around uh, between one and a half and three percent a year. But once the, the, the barrel started to be less and less inside, the evaporation rate will go up. And uh, the going up of evaporation means that when the barrel is by half, the evaporation rate could be 20% a year, even more, depends on the year. So by the year number eight, nine, barrel will be empty. So knowing that, we decided to produce a system that we can keep our barrels full during time and assuring you that the product was uh, 20 year old. How? Let's say we have a 1,000 barrels lot, just fill it up with the fresh rum. The next year we will check that these barrels will be around, let's say 3% um, emptier. So what we do is that we take 3% of the barrels. What it means, we will take around 30 barrels of the 1,000 barrels that we're using and we will refill the barrel again. 
So every year we will be losing from 30 barrels the first year, then up to 15 barrels when we have around uh, 500 barrels left. The, the rum that is filling the rest of the barrels will be the same age. So by year 20, by year 12, we will have around 600, 650 barrels left. By the year 20, we will be around 430, 440. And what I'm saying is not a mathematical fact, because every year, environmentally, climate, and all many, many, many things around changes and make this not an exact mathematical formula. By the year 20, which is the one that we're going to taste right now, we are sure that our product has been all together 20 years. One of the things of mixing the barrels together also give us that the profile of our rums are very uh, stable during years. I cannot assure you that the 20 year that you're drinking, that I'm drinking today, it's going to be the same 20 that was bottled one year or two years ago. It must be different. But the difference is so small or so slight that it's very difficult to perceive. The difference between both of them, I will give a, a, a present to the one that tell me which is the difference in the bottle aside from the red and blue. Oh, okay, you're right. It's that eight-year difference in the in the barrels. We also have different different ways of, a, of finishing the rums. For example, this one will be finished for one year in a in a sherry cask. Will be in bourbon cask for eleven years. Then uh, ex bourbon cask. Then will be in a, in a cherry cask. This one will be finished in a in a port cask for two years. So it's going to be eighteen years in the in the port cask, and then two years in the in the in the port casks. And then finally. I'm serving the rum. First thing that you might notice is that it's a little bit darker than his small brother, the 12 years old. Slightly. As you can see, it's not also the darkest rum in the world. It's a slightly darker. Again, we don't use any. Sometimes I think that doing this is like a suicide, taking 20 years all the trouble that you have, and then finally, a few minutes before bottling, putting something into the liquid is like really crazy. First thing, coloring. For me today, talking about the coloring of a product, saying, oh, this is a really age because of the color, it's very difficult to tell the truth on this because many products use the caramel, which is not illegal. Actually, it's completely legal in, in almost every country around the world. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a process that it's it's used to give a much more elegant or much more uh, aged uh, image to the product. I find it unnecessary. I think that having this kind of, of, of clarity in the in the in the rums is more honest and uh, for me actually more elegant. Uh, again, the thickness of the product. If you see, they don't move as water do. They start to move a little bit slower because of the thickness of the fudge that is catch from the from the wood and from the and from the time in the barrel. The second the second part uh, again here the nose. Amazingly, a little bit smoother than the small brother. Why? Because it's been eight years more in the barrel means it has a more time to develop inside the inside the barrel and to destroy these these enemies of the high alcohols in the in the nose uh, but again elegant complex really dark chocolate I can feel the Moscovado sugar for example cocoa a bit of coffee orange oak very balanced, very well integrated, so it's, it's hard to notice anything is very uh, exponential, like too sweet or too uh, bitter. It's, it's very well balanced. It's really inviting to, to have the drink. So this one I will jump to the, to the tasting. So cheers, salud. 
Very smooth. Very smooth. Uh, oh, this is really balanced between the nose and the and the and the mouth. The dark chocolate, oak. It's really amazing. Really easy to drink. Round. It's it's it's, it's capturing my my mouth. It's staying really it's staying longer than the small brother. Uh, with this uh, orange, all the citrusy from the back. Uh, I know I sound very emotional. Of course, these are my babies. I invite you to taste, to, to put the video when, I'm, when you're tasting, to agree or disagree with me. Actually, you can send me emails saying what you, what you find out from the, from the, from the bottles. Salud, señores. Muchas gracias. <laughs>